this is the rig that he built. It's the first movable offshore drilling rig ever built. These are my neighbors for the night, submersibles. So I just want to introduce you to Virgil. He's the president and the guy that kind of runs the show here at the Rig Museum. And this is a must stop in Morgan City, Louisiana. Virgil, thank you so much for giving us some time today. What in the That's world are we looking at behind us? Well, this is the offshore drilling rig, Mr. Charlie. And it's Mr. A, Charlie. Mr. Charlie. <laughs> it's the first movable offshore drilling rig ever built. So, so it floats. So what you see here and what you don't see is the barge underneath. That is amazing. He's going to give us some specs. Um, stay tuned because this is a harvest host site, which is the whole point of harvest host is taking to places you wouldn't mm -hmm. go. Wait until you see this. All righty, Scott. Well, let's go back in time a little bit. In 1947, a crew went from Morgan City out into the Gulf, built a platform, put a land rig on the platform, drilled a well, couldn't see land, so they were offshore. So every time they wanted to drill another well, they had to build a platform, put a land rig on it. So it's expensive, time consuming, but it worked and it was profitable. Then in the 1950s, a man in Morgan City came up with the idea of a reusable, movable drilling rig, one they could use over and over again and make the industry much more portable, less expensive, and this is the rig that he built. So the Mr. Charlie is the first movable rig ever built for offshore, and it went to work in 1954, and this just revolutionized the industry. So yeah, oil drilling, pretty, pretty impressive, because it's very different on land than it is in water. They're similar processes, but the big deal is you got water on top of the right. land. So how did this really change the industry in terms of oil drilling? All right, well, when the Mr. Charlie went out, uh, as we were talking about it, this industry was a very slow process to get it well drilled. So this changed the industry by making it much more portable, much faster, less expensive uh, to actually go out and drill a well. Now this Mr. Charlie was limited to 40 feet of water depth just because of the length of the legs that you see behind us. But in 1954, that was deep water. Uh, today, we're out in 12,000 feet of water depth, and every rig that's out there today is fashioned after this rig, the original floating submersible rig. Uh, today, we have semi-submersible rigs that can go in 12,000 feet of water depth. But if you go on this one, go on those, they're very similar. So this really just changed the industry to make it more profitable for the industry. But also with that comes more activity, more drilling, more production, more availability of the product of the oil and gas for the general market. So yeah, we can thank pioneers in this industry, kind of being innovative of mm -hmm. how to get to the resource we so badly need. Um, Virgil, just give us a little sense of, of the specifications. And RVers would like, like to talk, love to talk about water tanks <laughs> okay. and waste tanks and how much solar you got. So Mr. Charlie, we're gonna spin it around so he can point out some of these things, including the Derrick. It's pretty big. Offshore drilling rig, never seen the specs on this. Give us a sense of how big this thing is, and good Lord, it's pretty tall. It is, it is. Uh, as you can see, Scott, you don't see the barge underneath, but the barge footprint is 220 feet by 74 feet uh, through the center of the barge. And then you can see this end with the living quarters is uh, wider, so it's 136 feet wide on this end. So when it goes out, that barge would be visible. You'd be towing it out and then sink it on location to bottom. Uh, because it sinks on bottom and the length of the legs, it was limited to 40 feet of water depth. Now, in 1954, 40 feet was deep water. So as we progress through time and want to go deeper and deeper water depths, uh, today the rigs are, are very similar to this, because, but now they're always floating. So they still have the barge. They have longer legs. Now they're always floating. They're held in position with either anchors or with dynamic position where they have their own thrusters and can stay on location with that propulsion system. So now we can see uh, the living quarters that's closest to us, the, where you right see the here, name right? Mr. Charlie. Yeah. And then from there it goes back to where you have a lot of the service equipment. You can see the crane and behind the crane is our derrick and the derrick is our tower. That's where we're actually drilling. So our well is drilled from that location with our draw work system. Uh, so as we look at that 220 feet in length, you can see that the derrick right now where it sits is a, it's 145 feet tall from the deck up to the crown block. So Sounds right, like a fourteen-story building or something like that. Isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's uh, now when you look at the new ones, uh, and compared to this one, this one you see a two-story living quarters that sleep fifty-eight workers. 
Today we see drilling rigs going out, and again, now they're always floating. They're much more massive in size. So we might see eight stories of living quarters with 250 workers versus the 58 we had. So the modern technology has added a lot of jobs uh, to this, and the jobs are all minimum 12 hours a day for shifts from seven days on, seven days off, 14 days on, 14 days off, 28 days on, 28 days off. So you can live anywhere you want to live, uh, including an RV. And on your days off, travel, do whatever you want to do, spend time with your family. So it can give you a really good lifestyle to be working offshore. And it's global, work anywhere around the world. So in case my YouTube thing don't work out, maybe I'll be <laughs> an oil rig um, guy. Well, um, now you can do both. Now you can do both. <laughs> 14 weeks on, 14 weeks off. That's Or days, right? 14, 14 days, days on, 14, 14 days. days off, or 28 and 28. 28. Month on, month off? Hmm. I don't know. I think I'll let these guys do their job. Um, now, when we took the tour yesterday, uh, Virgil, there was, uh, we saw some of the crew quarters, we saw some of those rigs, but we also saw the drill bits that actually mm -hmm. go into the ground. Um, at the end of the, that's kind of the business end of the pipeline. Correct. The, the, drilling, uh, the drill pipe. Uh, the drill pipe. Mm -hmm. How much does those things weigh? Are they, and are they well, diamond well, crusted or how's that work? The biggest one we saw was a 26 inch bit and it weighs a little over 2,000 pounds. 2,000 pounds. And then of course we had the small one that I was picking up with one hand and, the, and so that one was only 10 pounds. 10 pounds. So <laughs> we, we've got a big range. Big range. Uh, and they do have diamond clad bits. Uh, the bits come in different teeth. Mm. So depending on what you're drilling through and, and some of those teeth, they'll have industrial diamonds glued to it if you're really drilling through something hard. So you're not gonna use it unless you really need it because yeah. you don't wanna just wear it out. Yeah. And when you come to Morgan City, Louisiana, um, again, Harvest Host site, this is what I love about Harvest Host, it takes you places you wouldn't necessarily go to learn about stuff like this. Mm -hmm. and, and when you meet the passion, the craftspeople for what, whatever it is, making nails, making blown glass, making bourbon, or in this case, making oil, it just gives a real sense of how big of an effort it is to just go through our modern life that somebody's put all that into it for you to get the benefit out of. So it's just so great. It is, it is. So the last drilling happened in 1986. So that was the last mm -hmm. hole uh, Mr. Charlie drilled. So other than being kind of a museum and educating the public, what, what else do you guys use the rig for today? Because it's, it's, it's in good shape, but it looks like it's still being kind of used. It is. Uh, we do do the tours every day, uh, Monday through Saturday. One at 10, one at two, as long as it's not pouring down rain, we'll work around showers. Uh, but besides the general public coming on board for that education, we also use it for a training facility with hands-on liveaboard training. So you can see with the living quarters on that other end, the two uh, blue, uh, different colors of blue, but uh, that's two different classrooms and another classroom by the drill floor. So we have formal classroom training but then everything you're learning in the classroom, you can go outside and apply it uh, by using the crane if you're doing rigging, uh, fall protection, confined space entry, rescue, everything that you need to learn in the classroom and need to be certified in to go offshore and work, then you can get all those certifications here by, and you live here to see if this is what you really wanna do. It's like taking that first rental RV to see if you really like it and then you finally buy one because you fell in love with it. So here you got to know, are you going to like it or not? And some guys come here to work and find out they don't like it and they quit. So that's great. They only rented it. You know, you hadn't bought it yet. And uh, so now the ones that graduate, then they're much better prepared to go out. They know what they're doing. Now they know which, uh, they know which RV to buy because uh, they've already experienced that. So yeah, just a great tie-in with the RVing. If you don't want to be a well driller, this is the place to learn about it. That's so you're it. not wasting a lot of time. And I think you mentioned yesterday during the tour that the um, retention rate went way, way up by having them mm -hmm. do this experience. It was like, it was- Well, some of the companies that uh, first trained here and, and go back to 1997, their retention rate was 15%. So they were hiring guys, putting some training into them, sending them offshore, and they were quitting. quitting. <laughs> so, like, this is not so then once they came here and they put them and lock them down, just like they're offshore, then they got to see the work they got to. So now there they weren't the unknowns. They knew the terminology. They knew when they got on a rig, they weren't lost. Yeah. And so the retention rate went to 85%. That's crazy. Wow, what a, what a game changer. And the other thing I learned on the tour yesterday um, is that not only is it oil rig workers, but um, even military and fire and first responders come mm -hmm. in so that when they come into the situation, they're familiar with it. Correct. And um, even something as simple as um, what did you mention yesterday, like uh, just finding where things might be hidden from a, if somebody bad gets on board yeah. and where to look for that. So it's uh, really nice that uh, Mr. Charlie's got had a second life here and, 
And just thanks again for being a, a Harvest host site. It's so amazing. I just love these kind of things. So as part of the fundraising for the museum here, this is kind of a nonprofit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we're going to put the QR code right here. Uh, Virgil's got a game. It's actually pretty cool. Um, if you're like, I don't know, solitaire or something like that, yeah. it's, it's spatial <laughs> puzzle putting things together. This is the uh, QR code. Let's just zoom in there and we'll put a screenshot for you. And what it is, you get a free game and then if you buy packs of, of the other games, well, maybe you explain to yeah, us what it is. It's, yeah. uh, well, the introductory pack is free, uh, gets you sucked in. Then uh, you have uh, packs of 100 puzzles for $1.99, 750 puzzles for $9.99, and hints for $0.99 cent to give you some, some help. But it's just a little uh, retro two-dimensional puzzle. You move the pieces, fill the shape, uh, but there are, you're moving them by rotating them, flipping them, and you fill the shape anywhere from two-piece puzzles to eight-piece puzzles. It so. was cool. I tried it this morning, and I probably need to work on my patience. <laughs> but if you're kind of doing the Roku books and things like that, puzzle books, um, this would be a great thing. And all the proceeds go right to uh, the museum here to help support their efforts. Uh, here's a tour to start yep, today. Yeah, that is a tour starting. Uh, so, Virgil, just again, thank you very much for um, what you do for the community, for the RV community, and, and uh, the industry. It's just really, really amazing. Well, oh, I'm glad we're here for you guys, and we got a big parking lot, so got a plenty of room. Plenty of room. room. And we'll put all the information down below, uh, so check that out in the video notes, and just thank you again. Thank you. Just one of the greatest things about Harvest Host is it brings you to really cool places. These are my neighbors for the night, submersibles. Next to the oil drilling rig, watching the sunset over the river. This is my van. I am all by myself tonight. There were two that stayed here yesterday. They were pulling out when I arrived late this afternoon. Thank you, Harvest Hosts. Thank you, Mr. Charlie.